Poker is a game of math, probability, and precision, but most players never really study or understand the numbers that drive it. Every hand begins with your initial decision. Do you enter the pot with your current holdings, or do you fold? That decision should hinge to a large degree on the strength of the hand you are holding, such as pocket aces, or the probability of your hand improving. I'm Terry Wood, and welcome to the Poker Math Series, where we break those numbers down one category at a time, from the pre-flop deal to the river card. Today, we'll start with hand distribution, the mathematical structure behind every hand you'll ever be dealt, and then dive into straight draws, the single most common category of drawing hands. In our next episode, we'll explore flush draws, as well as flush and straight combo draws, followed by no-pair hands like ace-king and king-queen, and finally paired hands, looking at the math that governs them all, pre-flop through river. Because when you understand the numbers, the game stops being guesswork and starts becoming strategy. Every poker hand begins here, with one of 1,326 possible two-card combinations in Texas Hold'em. The chart you see, often called the starting hand pyramid, represents every combination, ranked by strength and frequency. Within that universe, there are 78 pocket pair combinations, which is about 6% of all hands. Then there are 312 suited combinations, roughly 24%, and 936 offsuit combinations, making up the remaining 70%. That means you'll see a suited hand once every 4 deals, and a pocket pair about once every 17. It's a simple truth most players forget. Strong starting hands are statistically rare. There are 13 pocket pair ranks, from deuces through aces, and each has six possible suit combinations. That's where the 78 pocket pair combinations number comes from. 13 pocket pair times six possible combinations equals 78 potential pocket pair. For different rank hands like ace-king, or any specific ace-x hand, there are 16 total combinations, for suited plus 12 off suit. The odds of being dealt a specific hand breaks down like this. Pocket aces. There are six possible combinations of pocket aces, or any specific pocket pair. The probability of being dealt aces, or any specific pocket pair, is 0.45%, or about 221 to 1 odds. Ace-king suited. There are only four possible combinations for ace-king suited. This means you have about 0.30%, or 332 to 1 odds of being dealt ace-king suited. Ace-King Offsuit has 12 possible combinations, which give you about a 0.91%, or 110 to 1 odds of having it dealt to you. Ace-King, suited or unsuited, has 16 possible combinations, giving you a total of 1.21% probability, or 83 to 1 odds of it being dealt to you. As you can see, statistically, you're actually more likely to be dealt pocket aces than Ace-King suited. When we condense all those combinations into practical outcomes, the numbers tell a fascinating story. About 41% of hands have some form of straight draw potential. Another 10% have potential to make a flush. Around 14% can make either a straight or a flush. About 6% of the hands dealt to you will be pocket pairs. And the remaining 29%, nearly one-third of everything you're dealt, is pure trash. In other words, most of what you see preflop is mathematically weak. And that's why the best players don't win by getting better cards, they win by playing better ranges. Here's what that looks like in a live nine-handed game. Each player receives two random cards from that same 1,326-hand universe. The odds say that most of them will be holding marginal or unplayable hands. Maybe one player has a premium. Maybe none. This randomness and the rarity of true strength is the reason poker rewards patience and discipline. When you understand how seldom big hands appear, folding becomes less emotional and more mathematical. You're not waiting for luck, you're waiting for statistical opportunity. So before you ever make your first decision, remember this, the math has already spoken. Strong hands are the exception, not the rule. Now that we've seen how hands are distributed mathematically, let's zoom in on the type that makes up almost half of them, straight draws. We just saw that roughly 41% of all poker hands carry some form of straight potential, but not all of them are created equal. Let's start by classifying those hands based on how closely connected their ranks are. Connectors are consecutive ranks, hands like Jack-10 or 10-9. These are your most efficient straight makers, with about a 9% chance of completing a straight by the river, roughly 10 to 1 odds. One-gap hands, like 8-6 or 9-7 drop slightly to 7%, or a little worse than 13 to 1 odds. Two gaps, such as 9-6 or 8-5 fall to 6% probability, or about 15.67 to 1 odds. 
and three gaps, like jack seven or eight four, make a straight only about 4% of the time, or about 24 to one odds. The pattern is clear. Each additional gap lowers your equity. And the further your cards drift from the middle ranks, the fewer straights you can possibly make, and the lower your overall hand strength becomes. Hands like ace-king only have a 3% probability of making a straight, while king-queen is 5%. But hands such as these are not played for their straight-making capabilities, they are played due to their high card value. Here's why those percentages fall so quickly. Take 8-7, a pure connector right in the middle. It has four possible straight combinations, jack-10-9-8-7, 10 9 8 7 10 9 8 7 6 9 8 7 6 5 8 7 6 5 4 At a gap, say 8-6, and now you've lost one of those possible sequences. Only three remain. 9-6, two gaps, has just two, and 8-4, three gaps, only one. Every missing rank eliminates an entire straight possibility, and with it, a chunk of your equity. The tighter your ranks, the stronger your drawing potential, and the more frequently your hand connects meaningfully with the board. Now, let's connect these hands to the flop. First, the probability of flopping a straight. Within the middle connectors, one gap or two gap connectors about 1% or 99 to 1 odds. The flop will contain three cards in sequence 4% of the time, two cards in sequence. Interior, 33% of the time, two cards in sequence. Exterior, 7% of the time. Any two in sequence 40% of the time, and nothing in sequence 56% of the time. That means over 40% of all flops contain at least some straight draw potential, meaning that the odds that at least one player flops a straight draw is about 1.5 to 1 odds. Every gap in your starting hand weakens its future potential. Each step away from the middle ranks erodes profitability. That's why disciplined players fold weak connectors pre-flop, not because they're playing too tight, but because the math doesn't justify the chase. Straight draws are the foundation of poker's probability landscape. Understanding them builds range discipline, sharpens post-flop decision-making, and keeps you from falling into the trap of chasing hands that simply don't occur often enough. In poker, every hand tells a story, and math is the author. We've seen how the entire game begins with 1,326 possible starting hands, and how rare real strength truly is. We've also seen that while straight draw potential exists in 41% of hands, the odds of actually completing one are far smaller than most players realize. The takeaway is simple. Discipline is not tightness, it's understanding probability. Knowing the math behind your cards keeps you from chasing illusions and helps you focus on decisions that make money over time. In the next episode of the Poker Math series, we'll take this a step further, exploring flush draws and straight flush draw combos, and how multiple paths to improvement can dramatically shift your equity. For full charts, probability tables, and related articles, visit PokerRailbird.com. And if you found this breakdown helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who still believes 9-6 off suit is a fun hand to play. I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com, and we'll see you at the tables.